Hello and welcome to our worship service. I'm Pastor Steve Crittenden of Epiphany of Christ Lutheran Church in Apache Junction, Arizona. And we're so glad that you've joined us here on the seventh Sunday of Easter. And today our readings include the wonderful story of Jesus' ascension. Actually, the Feast of Ascension uh, is celebrated on Thursday. We have the reading today. And uh, that, of course, is the day that the uh, story of uh, the Incarnation uh, goes full circle as Jesus returns to heaven at his ascension. And we'll have that reading from Acts. But now we will start with our prayer of the day. Peace be with you. O, o God of glory, your son Jesus Christ suffered for us and ascended to your right hand. Unite us with Christ and each other in suffering and in joy, that all the world may be drawn to your beautiful and bountiful presence. Through Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. First reading is from Acts chapter 1. When the apostles had come together, they asked Jesus, Lord, is this the time when you will restore the kingdom to Israel? He replied, It is not for you to know the times or periods that the Father has set by his own authority. But you will receive power when the Holy Spirit has come upon you, and you will be my witnesses in Jerusalem, in all Judea and Samaria, and to the ends of the earth. When he had said this, as they were watching, he was lifted up, and a cloud took him out of their sight. While he was going, and they were gazing up toward heaven, suddenly two men in white robes stood by them. They said, Men of Galilee, why do you stand looking up toward heaven? This Jesus, who has been taken up from you into heaven, will come in the same way as you saw him go into heaven. Then they returned to Jerusalem from the mount called Olivet, which is near Jerusalem, a Sabbath stage journey away. When they had entered the city, they went to the room upstairs where they were staying, Peter and John and James and Andrew, Philip and Thomas, Bartholomew and Matthew, James son of Alphaeus and Simon the Zealot, and Judas son of James. 
All these were constantly devoting themselves to prayer, together with certain women, including Mary, the mother of Jesus, as well as his brothers. Word of God, Word of Life. And hear now the Holy Gospel, according to John, the 17th chapter. After Jesus had spoken these words to his disciples, he looked up to heaven and said, Father, the hour has come. Glorify your Son, so that the Son may glorify you, since you have given him authority over all people to give eternal life to all whom you have given him. And this is is eternal life, that they may know you, the only true God, and Jesus Christ whom you have sent. I glorified you on earth by finishing the work that you gave me to do, so now, Father, glorify me in your own presence with the glory that I had in your presence before the world existed. I have made your name known to those whom you gave me from the world. They were yours, and you gave them to me, and they have kept your word. Now they know everything you have given me is from you. For the words that you gave to me, I have given to them, and they have received them, and know in truth that I came from you, and they have believed that you sent me. I am asking on their behalf. I'm not asking on behalf of the world, but on behalf of those whom you gave me, because they are yours. All mine are yours, and yours are mine, and I have been glorified in them, and now I am no longer in the world. But they are in the world, and I am coming to you. Holy Father, protect them in your name that you have given me, so that they may be one as we are one. The Gospel of the Lord. What an amazing scene it is that we have described for us in this reading from Acts. We have this scene of Jesus meeting together with his closest followers. In Acts, they're called apostles. Elsewhere in uh, the New Testament and in the Gospels, they're called disciples. But here they are, and we read in verse 9 that as they are there with Jesus, he was lifted up, and a cloud took him out of their sight. They must have been watching that with such awe and such wonder. I can imagine them turning to one another saying, did you see that? I can imagine each one of them thinking to themselves, I can't believe what I just saw. Maybe even doubting, did I really see what I just saw? Perhaps the closest thing that I can think of, that I can imagine to being that, would be watching the Blue Angels or the Thunderbirds, those, those military jets flying in formation watching those six planes as they're doing their maneuvering so close to one another. Not only, though, are they flying in form formation, they're doing things. Sometimes we see that they break off and maybe two or three will come at the others from other directions and they'll pass so close to one another. And I look and I see that and I think to myself, did I really see that? It is such an amazing thing. We'll see them flying in formation, but then some of those planes will be upside down. It's an amazing thing to watch. And as I watch, so often I forget. I forget that I'm watching six planes and six pilots. And what I see is their unity. 
I see one thing moving in the sky. Excuse me. And what it is that they're doing, what these pilots are doing only works because of their oneness. It only works because they become like an organism. They cease to be six individual planes and individual pilots. Each pilot becomes keenly and completely aware of the other planes and pilots around them. Each pilot becomes acutely aware of their oneness and acutely aware of her or his place as part of that whole thing. And it cannot work if even one of those pilots becomes selfish. If even one of those pilots says, I want to be the fastest, it isn't going to work. Because it doesn't embrace the oneness now. It isn't going to work if even one of those pilots says, I want everybody to be looking at me. That selfishness is going to keep it from working. But you know, friends, it isn't that it works when they become one. It works because they are one. It only works when each one of those individual pilots embrace that they already are one. It isn't that they're practicing and doing what they can to become one. It is they are already one. This gospel reading that we have from John, the 17th chapter of John, the entire chapter is one prayer. This is Jesus praying. And it's spread in our lectionary over three years. The beginning of the prayer we have this year, next year we'll have the middle part, and the following year we'll have the last part of it. But I encourage you, at the end of this worship service, read the entire chapter of uh, John 17. If it takes you two minutes, it's because you stopped and started over. This isn't a, a long assignment, but I encourage you to do that so that you can see the arc that's taking place in this prayer, so that you can see the unity in the prayer that Jesus is praying. But with today's section that we have, I want to lift up two very important things. The first thing I want to lift up is that in this prayer, Jesus is defining for us a churchy word, a churchy term that we use so often. In fact, it becomes so familiar to us. It's one of these words that we so often use, but we so seldom talk about. Jesus, in the beginning of this prayer, is defining for us eternal life. And Jesus doesn't say that eternal life is about how long life lasts. Jesus isn't even talking about eternal life being a quality of life. At verse 3 in our reading, we hear Jesus define for us eternal life. And this is eternal life, that they may know you, the only true God, and Jesus Christ, whom you have sent. It is so important in this prayer that Jesus Jesus has defined for us eternal life. And Jesus defines eternal life as knowing God. And so if the gift of salvation is eternal life, then grace is to know God. To see Jesus is to see God. And I'll remind you how, as we've talked about uh, in the last week or two, the, the way that John's gospel starts in the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. He was in the beginning. With God, all things came into being through Him, and without Him, not one thing came into being. And the Word became flesh and lived among us, and we have seen His glory. The glory as of a father's only son, full of grace and truth. 
from his fullness we have all received grace upon grace. Friends, the, the Acts reading that we have, this story of the ascension, this is Jesus going back to heaven. This is Jesus finishing the cycle of the uh, incarnation story. Jesus going back home. This is Jesus. He's going he's gonna to work from home from now on, like so many of us. We have Jesus at the ascension story going back to heaven. This sets up for us the next two Sundays that we have. First, next week we have Pentecost, and then the following is uh, Trinity Sunday. And we have today Jesus saying that to have eternal life is to know God. And what we're learning is that we can't know God without seeing God as a mysterious community. That's the way that it was at the beginning. Remember in John's Gospel it says the Word was with and the Word was God. Together with the Holy Spirit, a trinity. Not three, but one. A community. A community of oneness. And this speaks to the second thing that I want to lift up from our gospel reading today. Jesus prays that his followers would be one. Not that they would become one but that his followers would recognize and embrace that they are one. So they may be one as we are one, Jesus prays. I want to remind you that, that one of the creation stories, the first of the creation stories, this is found in the end of Genesis chapter 1. I want to remind you what it says at verse 27. God created humankind in God's image. We, we bear God's image. We who bear God's image, you and me, we were created as a community just as God is. We were a community from the very beginning. From the moment of creation, we were a community. Now God has created and gifted and loves us each as individuals. With personalities, with quirks, with skills, and with talents. But each one of us different. Unity, friends, does not mean uniformity. Jesus created us, uh, God created us all as individuals. But humankind was created in community. And you can call that liberalism, you can call it communism, you can call it whatever ism that you want to call it. But it is a truth that is revealed to us in Scripture. And I want to remind you again at the beginning of John's Gospel, verse 17. The law indeed was given through Moses. Grace and truth came through Jesus Christ. Truth came through Jesus Christ. And in this prayer, Jesus speaks to the truth of our oneness. In fact, Jesus' entire prayer here in chapter 17 reflects that oneness. Verses 1 through 5, Jesus is praying for himself. In verses 6 through 19, Jesus then turns and begins to pray for his disciples in community. Now, Jesus is praying. Jesus prays in uh, verse 6 through 19 for his disciples, those 11 men who are named in our Acts reading along with certain women. And it's such an unfortunate thing that uh, only Mary is named. We don't know who the other women are, but the point of the matter is, is that having witnessed Jesus ascend to heaven, they were one. They were together, we are told. And what we see in that Acts reading 
is the church. The one church. Not the Lutheran church and the Roman Catholic church and the Episcopal church and the Unitarian church and the Baptist church and the Presbyterian church. We see that there is one church. And then we see something happen at verse 20. At verse 20 here, Jesus makes a shift. This is after he has prayed for himself. This is after he has prayed for his disciples. At verse 20, then Jesus says, I ask not only on behalf of these, but also on behalf of those who will believe in me through their word. Sisters and brothers, that is Jesus praying for you and for me. That is Jesus praying for us. The end of this prayer is Jesus praying for those who will come after the first disciples. This reflects the unity of us, the oneness of us. But the truth is this, friends, that the powers of this world encourage selfishness. They encourage selfishness because selfishness des denies the oneness that we are. It denies the oneness that you are part of. Selfishness denies the oneness of your creation. And it keeps you from knowing God. That's why the powers of the world encourage selfishness, because selfishness keeps you from knowing God, and therefore selfishness keeps you from having eternal life. And Jesus prayed that you would have eternal life. Friends, we bear the image of God. We are many, but we are one. That's the very reason why, if I ask you right now, if I ask you to think about the happiest moments of your life, the moments that gave you the most joy, not one of you is going to write down a moment of selfishness. Because eternal life, the abundant life that Jesus hopes for us, cannot be found in selfishness. It can only be found in recognizing the community that we are from the moment of creation. You know, as I think about the, uh, those airplanes that are flying in formation, I think about what sight could be more amazing than watching these thunderbirds fly or watching those Blue angels fly. What could be more wonderful and awesome than that? Seeing the thunderbirds and the blue angels flying together, that is even more, more of a sight of awe and wonder. And it's a sight that is happening this month. It's a sight that has happened in so many cities in the United States as these two groups have come together as one, honoring the health care workers here in the United States. Sisters and brothers, that is grace upon grace. As communities recognize that they are in community with one another. That is God's people bearing the image of their God. Their God who is community for the sake of all the people who are God's children. Amen.
We now pray for the church, the world, and all people in any need. O God, call your people to be one as you are one. Unite your church in the truth of your gospel, the love of our neighbor, and the call to proclaim your reign to all people. Lord, in your mercy, breathe life into your creation. Guide your people as we explore the mysteries of the universe. We pray for the work of scientists and mathematicians whose skill enriches our understanding. Lord, in your mercy, make your justice known among the nations of the earth. Protect the vulnerable. Redirect those who use violence and greed as weapons, Lord, in your mercy. Come to the aid of your children. We pray for those engulfed in grief, those without supportive families, and for all who are isolated, powerless, or afraid, that all may rest their anxieties in your care, Lord, in your mercy. Give courage to all who embark on new ventures. Especially this day, we remember those who risk their lives to serve in our armed forces. Grant safety to those serving at home or abroad and ensure them of your never failing strength, Lord, in your mercy. Raise all your saints to eternal life. Until that day, we give you thanks for the faithful examples of those who have listened to your voice and now rest in you, Lord, in your mercy. With bold confidence in your love, Almighty God, we place all for whom we pray into your eternal care, through Christ our Lord. Amen. We continue to be grateful for you as you give uh, generously to support the ministry of broadcasts like this and the other ministries of Epiphany of Christ Lutheran Church. And so we pray our offertory prayer. Merciful God, you open wide your hand and satisfy the need of every living thing. Open our hands to receive your gifts. Open our hearts to embrace your gifts. Open our lives to live grace. We give thanks to you that you illumine our way through life with the words of your Son. Give us the light we need. Awaken us to the needs of others and at the end, bring all the world to your feast. Through Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord, who teaches us to pray, our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name thy kingdom come thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us and lead us not into temptation but deliver us from evil for thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever amen and now the Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord's face shine on you with grace and mercy. The Lord look upon you with favor and give you peace. Amen.
Christ is risen just as he said. Go in peace. Share the good news. Alleluia.